next episode of Better Call Saul. I will put an end to this, whatever it takes. How did you leave things with Howard Hamlin? We didn't miss anything. Thank you so much, Doc. Of course. Come on in. We'll take a look. Hey guys, Pete here. D-Day is upon us, or it will be by the end of the sixth episode of Better Call Saul's final season. Today I'll be doing a preview of what to expect based on the two different teaser trailers, the promo photos, which there is a big surprise in those, and everything else that's out there to give us clues about this upcoming episode. There's some exciting looking stuff here, including a familiar business card and a returning character that we haven't seen for a couple of seasons. If any of that sounds like spoilers to you, then this is your chance to leave. And with that out of the way, let's get into it. The title of Season 6, Episode 6 is Axe and Grind, and the official summary reads, Kim and Jimmy enlist a knowledgeable contact. Howard scrutinizes Jimmy's business practices. The teaser opens with some photos of Jimmy. Howard likely got these from his PI, and that's probably related to him looking into those business practices. In what I presume is his home, he says, I will put an end to this, whatever it takes. And the whatever part of that feels ominous. In other Howard news, there is a shot of his wife in the promo photos. She's played by Sandrine Holt, which Expanse fans will know as drummer's wife Oksana, or you might recognize her from House of Cards. The photo has her listed as Cheryl Hamlin, and we heard him mention her in his therapy session back in episode 4. It sounded like they were having problems, and you can imagine that whatever he's going through as a result of Jimmy and Kim's plans might be stressing things further. Speaking of Kim, we see her in a courtroom arguing a case, and notice that Cliff Main is watching. You can't say for sure what's happening here, but this isn't the normal courtroom that we usually see them in Albuquerque, and that might be important, but what really jumps out here is a shot of an isotope's air freshener. This looks exactly like the one we first saw in Jeff the cab driver's car in the Gene scene from season 4. Her client is definitely not Jeff, so it isn't clear if this is related to his story directly. It could just be a nod to that scene, or it could be a pre-Easter egg, but I'm at a loss on how this particular air freshener would pop up again six or so years later in Omaha, Nebraska. Outside the courtroom, Cliff asks how she left things with Howard Hamlin. So I'm guessing he's there under the pretense of seeing what she's doing with her pro bono work, but really he's trying to get more information about what's happening with Howard. That cuts to a shot of their plan, with Kim standing in front in a way that she's blocking some of the steps. On the left, you see the ones we've already seen unfold. The Country Club, the Kettleman's, and Wendy. On the right, you can see a camera, an eyeball, T-1, and D-Day. She's crossing out the next to the last one, the one that reads T-1, which means they've made it to D-Day, and that just has an illustration of a mushroom cloud below it. This appears to mean that the plan to tarnish Howard's good standing will come to a conclusion in the next episode, which also happens to be the mid-season finale. In a recent interview, Peter Gould said that even though they didn't know the season would be split in two when they wrote it, episode 7 does end with a big cliffhanger. He said, this is a big one. I think this is going to be a painful few weeks for a few people to find out what happens. Hopefully, people will enjoy the pain and not come after us with torches. This kind of sounds like we're not going to see the aftermath of what the D-Day nuke looks like. And later, Jimmy says, we didn't miss anything as they look at the plan together. And to me, they look like they're pretty pleased about how things are playing out. There's another shot later where they're toasting with a glass of wine. He says, here's to tomorrow, and she responds tomorrow. And this is where I start to wonder what's going to come along to really screw things up. It looks like they have a good plan. It looks like they're pulling it off, but they look a little too relaxed with that wine. And Howard is out there with a PI and Gus has his guys out there. So there may be a conflict there. And there's always the chance that Lalo may come back. Before we get there, we see everyone's favorite shady veterinarian, Caldera. The last time we saw him was back in season four when he stitched Nacho up before telling him that the cartel stuff was too hot and that he never wanted them to contact him again. Here we see him walking through his office, 
He's putting on some gloves, and then there's a shot of him shining a pen light in Jimmy's eyes as he sits on a table. In the voiceover, you hear someone say, thank you so much, Doc. And this doesn't sound like Jimmy at all. And Caldera responds, of course, we'll take a look. It's somewhat confusing as to why Jimmy would be getting an exam from a veterinarian. He did have a black eye the last time we saw him, although it doesn't look like he has it here. And unless they're there for something else already, I don't see why he would go to him for that. You go see this guy when you need something you can't get anywhere else. Since they're scheming, it makes sense for them to visit him for any number of reasons. And there was a promo photo from the first batch that came out of Jimmy and Kim looking at a notebook in his office. In that, there's a dropper bottle by her hand, and that's likely why they're there. The post-it note board has an eye on it. There could be a connection there, but we're going to have to wait and see what that's all about. What's really exciting here is this quick shot of the notebook that showed up in Saul's house in the episode one teaser. It's the same one from the promo photo, and when they look at it, you can see the card for best quality vacuum. Why is that important? Because that's Ed the Disappearer shop, and there's been an ongoing mystery of how Jimmy knew about him. From the first episode, we know Jimmy has Caldera's notebook during the events of Breaking Bad. And at times in that series, he seemed to function in some of the same ways as the vet. So my working theory is that Caldera needs to use Ed's services to disappear at the same time he's working with these two. And he leaves the notebook behind with them because he won't need it wherever he's going. It's coded, but he may have given them the key. And him disappearing at this point would explain how Jimmy knows to trust Ed and why Caldera isn't around in Breaking Bad. And then possibly how Saul has so many connections when he meets Walt and Jesse. We also get a look at Jimmy's new office, which, thanks to Francesca's input, is much classier looking than it turns out to be in the original series timeline. There's a shot of Jimmy in his office where we can see the film school kids behind him. It's always good to see those guys. And it looks like Kim brings him a bottle of Zafiro to celebrate the opening. There's a shot of Francesca grimacing as one of his clients puts out their cigarette on the armrest of the new furniture. And it looks like business is still booming. Then there's a conversation out back where Jimmy tells Francesca, to whom much is given, much is expected. She looks reluctant, but he hands her his phone saying, it's just a phone call. And that version of the teaser ends as he makes a smiling face at her. You can see the toilet and the trash can here, and it really, really makes me wonder how they get from this decor to the Constitution mural behind his desk. I would guess that this is related to the phone on the board from the T-minus-1 part of the plan, since that's where we are. If you look at the other posts in that row, one says 7-PC-842159. That could be a case file or something along those lines. One says HHM, and the last one says Delivery Hal with a question mark. Hard to say what that all means, but I expect this will be the thing that sets Howard over the edge. There are no Gus sightings in either teaser, but there are a couple of shots of Mike. There's one of him looking out a window with binoculars that doesn't provide much context for what might be happening. Then there's a shot of him in the laundry above the super lab, and it's cut to make it look like he might be confronting Lalo. In a shot that's in a dark place that possibly could be inside the lab site, he says, I'm right here. And they cut that with a shot of Lalo holding a gun. Both of these are somewhere dark, but I don't think they're in the same place. It's not impossible that he could show up in Albuquerque this week, but it seems like there's another step before he gets there. And there's a chance that we might see how that plays out. He has the slide rule. He'll track down who commissioned it from the company that made it. And when we discussed this during the live stream, we thought it would be possible for them to skip to his return. But I'd still be surprised if they did. For what it's worth, it does seem like some time has passed in between episodes. Or during the episode itself, considering so many steps of the plan are complete and the office work is already finished. But I expect more build up before the showdown with Mr. Salamanca. There's also this last shot of an axe, and you can't really tell what's going on in it. But if I think of who would be the scariest character to be wielding it, I go straight to Lalo. The word axe is in the title. So I was also thinking that this might be from a flashback, maybe something in the teaser. But I haven't come up with any good ideas about what this would be connected to. So we'll have to wait and see. And that's pretty much it for the trailers. 
As I mentioned at the beginning, this is pretty exciting looking. Seeing Caldera come back, seeing the card for Ed was a big thrill. Getting an idea of how that comes into the story since it plays such an important part later. And then seeing Howard's wife, it all feels like we're moving towards some big events here. And I really like how they illustrated that by using D-Day for the last step of the plan. And that mushroom cloud is a great touch. And I think that's a good place to leave things. Please let me know in the comments what you think about the teasers and the upcoming episode. How do you think this is all going to play out? Please like this video if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon.